Um, we've been here for the third, this is our third day of continuous live coverage from the OpenStack Summit. Uh, this is theCUBE, the Silicon Angle's premier video uh, property. We go out to the events, we talk to the people you want to talk to. Fortunately, you can't be here, but we, we go out, we extract the signal from the noise, we talk to uh, the people that are heavily engaged, making things happen, and uh, we're in day three. So uh, John, my co-host, has stepped out for a minute, so it's just me, and I'd like to introduce our next guest, uh, Felix Xavier, the CTO and founder of Cloudbyte. So uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Thanks. thank you very much. So why don't you just give us, we just had, um, we've, been, we've had a kind of a run of really large companies, right. but you know, what's exciting about this space, what's exciting about being in tech is we have innovation that comes up through exactly. startups as well. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give us a quick little background on, uh, on Cloudbyte. Right, so uh, before this I was with uh, NetApp, all right, so that's that's where I got an opportunity to work with a couple of service providers. Okay. So I found the need that the new technology is required in the storage space to cater into the service provider space. So enterprise storages are good for the enterprise applications, um, which is deployed on the enterprise. Okay. Um, but that's more of a static deployment, things are not going to change. But when you come to the service provider, it's like today you are going to serve um, 100 customers and 10 of them are going out tomorrow and another new 10 are coming in. It's a lot more dynamic. The things are coming in and going out. It's a lot more dynamic. So that's also makes the need for a new technology on the storage space. Okay. Right. And the new technology is really to support multi-tenancy. That's kind of the, the problem that you guys are specifically uh, yeah, addressing. Exactly. The multi-tenancy is one part of it and okay. the other, other part is uh, um, really the dynamic provisioning capability. Okay, right? dynamic so, provisioning of the storage, okay. All right, so so with, with with current enterprise class storage, you can define only the capacity. You cannot say what is the performance parameter I need, right? Okay. So with the new class of storage, you can define both capacity and performance on the fly. Okay. Right? Today, when customer comes and asks, I need a thousand transactions per, per second uh, for my application. So during the weekend, I want to run some reporting, so he needs uh, 10,000 IOs uh, okay. transactions during the weekend, right? Okay. So he'll be able to, on the fly, increase him to 10,000 from 1,000, and you can bring him back to 1,000 uh, end of the week. Now right. can uh, can your software also do that dynamically based on the demands of the application, so there doesn't have to be somebody worrying about the schedule and how those demands are changing, or is it or is it really more schedule-based? Um, right, so it, it you can you can set the schedule okay. so that it's possible, okay. right? So once you set the schedule, the, our software is going to internally take care of assigning the relevant resources okay. for the application, okay. and from then you go on. Okay, right? great. Yeah. So uh, you're here at OpenStack, and mm -hmm. uh, you had an announcement. Why don't you tell us what was the announcement that you uh, that you made here at the show? All right. So in fact, we have built a very strong storage technology, right? So our storage nodes are really intelligent, right? We have also built a very strong provisioning management layer on top of that, where this management layer can manage hundreds of nodes sitting across multiple data centers. Okay. Right. Um, that's that's our second level of strength. Right. So, with OpenStack, we integrated our intelligent storage nodes with OpenStack. Okay. So now, instead of using our management framework, you'll be able to use the OpenStack framework and sit from the OpenStack console and you'll be able to do whatever you can do from the CloudBrite console. You can create a volume and set the IOPS and change the IOPS on the fly and all of that you can do from OpenStack okay. console itself. Okay, great, so that, that brings up the next uh, point I want to get into which is really OpenStack and, mm -hmm. and kind of how did you as a founder of a new company mm -hmm. and, and did you at the beginning decide to go with an OpenStack standard or did you have some of your own technology, your own methods and right. then you transitioned? Right, you know, uh, we started this company late 2010, but the 
thinking in mind went ahead in 2009 during that time frame so right. that time wasn't much of an open stack right uh, yeah not much of open stack not much of cloud platforms okay. and things like that so the plan started that time so we started to build our intelligent storage nodes and the intelligent provisioning and management capability on our own right but of course we derived some of the open source components and we started building it and now when we go to the customers they either use open stack or something derived out of open stack okay. right so then we felt yeah it's a good idea where we can prepackage the things with open stack okay. and provide the support on our own rather than asking the customer to develop the open stack integration for cloud right so okay. that's how we, we are moving on from our own thing to the open stack Uh, interesting. And from a timeline perspective, when did that happen? Is that in the last six months? Was that in the last year? We're you know we're here at the show, and everyone keeps commenting about you know how far this uh, OpenStack has come, even in the, in the last six months since the last show. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious from your interaction with customers. Mm -hmm. um, when did you kind of run into the oh maybe you guys should you know consider doing it OpenStack? And then when did you make that decision because you'd seen enough? Um, input from the field that yeah, this is a way we want to go and be part of. All right, so you know, that's sort of feedback we are getting um, for the last six months to one year, right? So we are quite new. So right. we are busy in product development. Right. While we are pitching to a couple of potential customers and things like that. And we found the need for integrating with the customer's existing infrastructure, okay. right? Either it being a VMware or OpenStack. So that's how we picked up a couple of such platforms. And OpenStack is one of that. Okay, great. Um, we are developing on top of that. And and talking a bit again about your customers a little bit. So where are you kind of on your customer lifecycle acquisition? You've got mm -hmm. a few customers. Are they early adopters? Is mm -hmm. it kind of full production? Is it beta? Where are you kind of yep. uh, as a startup? Yep. So uh, we did our first release around August um, last year. Okay. So we started as an early access program, and okay. we ran into a couple of um, uh, accounts on trial basis. Okay. Uh, those two of that account moved into production. Okay. And we are keep running on many such deployment okay. um, on the trial basis that includes the large service provider in Europe and a uh, couple of them in India and uh, two of them in US. And in fact, after moving into US three months back, uh, I'm seeing a lot of traction from the US customers. I bet, I bet. Where All did right. you move? So you, you moved to the States to get closer to? Uh, customer base. To the customer base, right. okay. Yeah. So if, if you look at the IAS provider space, um, it is like, I cannot give the strategy, but most of this, the largest service providers are based in US. Okay. So uh, US is going to be our predominant market, right? Right. In that direction, we are also planning to hire a new market-facing CEO for Cloudbyte. Okay. So he'll be coming on board in another two months. Okay, good. Yeah. And where and where is your offices? Where did you move? Uh, our office right now is in Campbell. Okay, uh, Bay, Campbell, Area. Bay Area, okay, yep. super. Well, mm -hmm. that's where you want to be if you're going to. Yep, I know. Either that or Seattle, I guess. There's a lot of cloud action going on in uh, Seattle as well. Exactly, yeah. So uh, let me ask you too, just from your perspective, having recently come here, right, with our last guest we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, there's a very kind of US centric focus right now, mm -hmm. at least at, at, at this point of the conversation mm -hmm. about cloud and cloud adoption. Mm -hmm. But from, from, from India and what you saw there in your early pilot customers, how far behind do you think that market is, or mm -hmm. is it even behind at all, or is it just a kind of a concentration of resources here at this point? Right, you know, um, it, it's, it's behind in terms of the size of the market, right? So the, the size of the, so this product is going to be a lot more applicable when the scale is really high. Um, you cannot manage uh, with the manual operations, right. right? You cannot put together some drives to get some performance and things like that. So. So in India, it's like the scale of operation is still lower uh, comparing to the U.S. market. Okay. So that's where the current opportunity we are finding more in U.S. Okay. than India because of the scale. The, the scale of the service providers. Yeah, scale of the service providers. Yeah. Um, and there's, and that's, you think that's really a function of there just aren't that many kind of cloud-based businesses that are leveraging kind of a multi-tenancy, you know, AWS type of service to build their businesses that we've seen mm -hmm. here. That big? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's true partly, but the, if you look at the IT market segment itself, okay. it, it's smaller in India. It's okay. The things are moving into IT slowly, right? But one advantage I would say for India is um, so many of the businesses are still getting onto computers and IT, but they all straight away moving into cloud. 
okay. they don't have the intermediate step right right uh, unlike in us so that that's a fundamental difference yeah but having said that it's going to take uh, some more time uh, for a large scale adoption of cloud right. it's ramping up rapidly but it's going to take some more time for the product like cloud by to fit in very well there okay right? and so just again you're being relatively new to come to come over live here what mm -hmm. what's your kind of feel here at the uh, at the summit how do you like the vibe have you been able to get into any sessions or you just been uh, been working the booth and talking to people all right <laughs> i'm i'm a little bit busy on talking to people in booth so it's, we are pretty busy in okay. booth okay <laughs> are you getting a lot of activity are you getting some good uh, all right. some good opportunities coming your way exactly so it's it's interesting to talk to the people uh, with this the technical mindset and many people you can come across they appreciate okay this is a problem i want to solve right now uh, you have picked up the hot area and things right. like that right. so so that that way the exposure here is lot higher than back in india i would say okay uh, so Great. It's, it's interesting good good yeah. good yeah. well we've been here with felix xavier the cto and co-founder no the founder right of cloudbyte yep. um, who's trying to solve you know a multi tenancy problem and really uh, some again as with most of the open stack um, contributors and companies some really fundamental issues with supporting this new way to deliver applications and deliver computing power and storage specifically. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you for giving, right. me, giving me this opportunity. Terrific, Thanks. so mm -hmm. we will take a short break. We'll be back to OpenStack Summit 2013. You can join the conversation. The uh, hashtag is OpenStack. Jump on Twitter, send us some questions. We look forward to uh, interacting. And we'll be right back after this short break.